Hi everyone, today I've got something fun to do. We're about to render our hair and tortoise in watercolours. So let's go, enjoy. Hi. Today we're going to be rendering our hair and tortoise. And we're going to be using watercolour and a variety of brushes. We will need plenty of fresh clean water. As the, as the name suggests, watercolours require lots of water. We'll be, um, I've chosen this pancake um, colours to use and these are available at art shops, variety stock shops and news agents. I've also got my professional set here and that's in my palette. The watercolours in this palette are purchased in tubes and all watercolour becomes liquid once we work with the water. I like to mix up my paint until it appears like ink. Firstly, I dip my brush into the water and then work it on top of the colour disc I'm using. I do this three or four times until it's like ink or runny cream. I do not scrub with my brush. Next, I'll paint along the line, outline of the shape I'm about to colour. I add water and work inwards. I want the hair's coat to appear fluffy. I paint water in certain areas also. This allows the paint to run and spread across the paper in a random way and this helps to add interest to our painting and it's called a wet on wet technique. I move the paint around with a scrumbling technique. I am not scrubbing my brush on the paper however so be careful not to do that just using the tips. I use the lightest brown first on the top area of the hair. Now I'm carefully outlining with the darker brown. Notice I leave the white area of the hair untouched. With watercolour, use we want with watercolour. We want the paint to be translucent, meaning we can see our lines through it. We then apply layers of deeper shades. Our first colour, um, our, our first colours are usually the lightest, and we allow them to dry. That helps build up depth and interest. Eventually, we return to our dry work and outline it to finish it, so that in the end we have covered all the pencil lines. Be careful not to lean on your work. Keep your hand and your arm off the wet paint. I mix grey and blue for my first underpainting of the tortoise shell. You can use your palette to mix colours. If too much colour comes from your brush, you dilute paint and move it around on the paper with the brush to even it out. If my strokes become scratchy, that means I need to add more water. And Notice I'm moving around my painting, applying the base colours first. This allows the areas to dry, so that when I outline the particular um, animal I'm working on, the paint won't run and I'm controlling its flow. You can paint your flowers and your butterflies in any colour you choose. I tend to start with the paler shade of the colour I want to use for that particular family of flowers. You make your colours paler just by adding extra water to the shade you are using. Once base colours of animals are dry, I then go back and start to pick out the details such as the eyes. I use the big brush to add shadowing and apply what is called a wash to these areas. Do this to all the areas that would normally be in shadow. This tends to be underneath and overlapping areas. I add black to what colour I'm using to outline the areas. This gives me a shadow that matches the colour of whatever particular thing we're painting. If you make a mistake with watercolours, you can correct it by flooding the unwanted paint with water and dabbing it up with a paper towel. Be careful not to overpaint in any one area, however. If you start to see small balls of paper form, stop. It means your paper is about to um, create a hole. The best thing to do is just to leave it, let it dry, and then later return to your work.
When I'm painting curved areas, such as the hind leg of the hair, for instance, my brush strokes remain curved, and this, this helps the area um, appear more 3D. With watercolour, the direction of your brush stroke is very important. I am using lots of water when blending my line areas, but notice I gently wipe my brush on the side of the water container. I don't want to over flood my work either, I don't want it to, to uh, I don't want to lose control of what I'm doing. When I use the scrumbling technique, and that helps where I've got the darker lines moving, moving it around, I add my bigger brush and it's damp, not saturated, but this helps to, to gently tone all the lines together and give me that lovely 3D effect which we're after here. To make really thin lines, it's all about the nice watery paint you, have, you are mixing and you're about to use. If the moisture levels are right, your brush just flows over the paper and it's easy. If your lines start to get scratchy, and the ease of your paintings begins to become um, difficult, that means you need to add more water. Remember when you go back to painting your flowers, the lighter shades, uh, we use the lighter shades first and then we outline in the base colour later for some depth. I, I would go around all the my flowers later underneath. I've used three different shades of my greens for the grasses and the plants. To paint grass, I start from where it grows and I use long random strokes, lifting the brush up as I complete the work, uh, complete the stroke. Make sure you randomly select greens. I also add yellow and paint blades of grass with that. Remember to paint a few blades in front of the tortoise, as this will give the effect that they're in the field, not on top of the field. If your discs become dirty with the mixing, you can clean them up just by adding water and wiping them clean with a tissue. 